this is uh, RC. I'm going to be walking through a simple problem and stream of conscious what I'm doing to see if this is a useful learning aid for anyone out there. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, hopefully the progression post on the Reddit forums by uh, underscore MadK who had a truly excellent list of mostly gaming projects that span from very simple to very complicated and pretty much touch upon a lot of the major concepts in software development. Uh, his first one he listed was just a text-based adventure game. Uh, key topics basically uh, input and output from the user, uh, basic code structure, getting everything running, things of that nature. I'm going to be attempting to do this in about 15 minutes, since that's what my free video length is. I picked Ruby for my language just because everyone's probably who's interested has seen or done this in Python. Uh, learn with the Learn Python the Hard Way guide, which solves a similar problem. Uh, real quick, since this is the first time, uh, I've got Chrome around for Google, which will invariably save my butt several times during this. Uh, I'll be using Notepad++ for my text editor. Uh, I will be checking code in via Git. Hopefully, I will be doing commits regularly. Uh, I keep an interactive, basically IRB or Python. I'll keep a, whatever I'm working at the time. I keep a, the command line interactive uh, read evaluate print tool open just because it's incredibly useful for me to just be able to do a real quick one-off. Can I do this with an array? Is it okay if I use this function? Uh, instead of having to run my code and find out. And finally, I'll just have a regular command prompt sitting around for running whatever Ruby file I generate. All right, so we are making a text-based adventure game. I'm going to save a blank file. It's going to want me to put something in it first. Uh, I'm going to save this as a .rb file. Uh, we're going to call this game.rb because I'm creative. Uh, and conveniently you'll notice Notepad recognize that as a Ruby file, so we'll get syntax highlighting and some other features out of that. Let's start out by making our class. We're probably going to creatively call this game again. Uh, yes, I have my tab set up properly. I'm not going to screw things up. This is not my normal development machine. Uh, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the initialize method. Uh, for Ruby, this is the method that gets called when you create a new version or new instance of your class. So if I create game.new somewhere else, it's going to call uh, initialize. Uh, I'm not going to have any arguments now, but I'll leave the parens there to remind me that I'm probably going to need some later. Uh, however, the parentheses are optional. I tend to generally use them in Ruby, though, just out of habit, and it will prevent occasional errors where the Ruby interpreter can't figure out which arguments are supposed to go where if you're queuing a couple commands together. Uh, I don't think we're doing anything in here. Uh, got our basic game class. Uh, since I'm not making a different start file for now, we will just call... Uh, let's set this to... messages, but nothing output, because, well, we didn't send anything out. Uh, all right. uh, at its core, a text-based adventure game is basically just a read-evaluate print loop. Uh, 
which means, much like what it sounds like, we read an input, we evaluate it, uh, we print out a response back to the user, and then we loop back to the read state. So we're going to basically just want to be running constantly, which means we probably need a way to start and stop running. So we can deal with actually stopping later. For now, we'll just make a throwaway start method that uh, just does while true. killed it and it happened to die inside of uh, line uh, 9 or 23. 23 it should be. Uh, either which are useful. Oh, yes, sorry, tied to line 9, which makes sense because we were inside the while loop, which is where it would die. Uh, Now we're thinking about uh, variables our game is probably going to need. We need to keep track of. Uh, let's see. Probably going to need to keep track of our current room, which very well might be a room class, which we'll add in a minute. Uh, I'll leave this with nil for now, but. Those are the major things we're going to need to do for now. Uh, so let's see. Let's look at our run loop. This is what's happening each and every time. thinking about if I want to display to the user the room they're in the first time. I'm trying to decide if I need a way to keep track of that, or if there's a good way to always display it the first time the room is set. I think for now, we'll do a check where if nil probably move this out to a different class. 
notes, but we'll uh, leave it in here for now, since we are short on time. And 15 minutes may have been woefully optimistic. Well, as any programming estimate is. Uh, let's make a method to populate rooms. Uh, I'm going to make populate rooms return the first room in the maze, if you will. Uh, and since I'm not doing anything else inside this block, we can make this a modifier. So, set current rooms equal to the result of populating rooms, which should be the first room in the maze, if current rooms is nil. And instead of assignment, I'll actually do a comparison, because that'd be fun. Uh, so, back to populate rooms. Now, just to do this quick and dirty, we'll make a room a hash of uh, we'll make start room. description in our room, and we're probably going to want uh, actions. Uh, an action in a room is going to be a list of lists again. in that room. We'll say waving works in this room. And it doesn't require Oops. You were not a hash. You were right race. Waving and it requires nothing. Because you don't need anything to wave. You've got your hand with you already. And we've got second room. Ideally, we'll abstract this out uh, in the future into methods that build the rooms for us in a little more cleaner fashion, and possibly just have a CSV file that we generate our rooms from. Since this is obviously going to be much longer than 15 minutes, let's see. back to room one. Uh, actions waving still works in this room. However, you can also uh, eat if you have uh, sandwich. And we'll probably put a sandwich in this room. We may need to think about items that exist in rooms as well. Except you can eat in here, so I'll actually make this feed. Maybe there's something in the room to feed. Uh, which really means we should. Move 